Hi everybody, today's video is going to be a review for a change and it will be on the Altair Astro 72 EDF scope. Now, as you can see the way I'm swinging this round, this is a very compact scope. It does extend out the dew shield to make it a little bit longer. But this is my main imaging scope. I absolutely love it. I've used it for since I think August last year and I thought now is the time to do a review because we're coming up into the Astro season. So let's get down to reviewing the Altair Astro 72 EDF Deluxe. First things first, this is a really compact scope. By compact I mean small. You could literally chuck this in a rucksack and go up a mountain and then use it on something like a um, Star Adventurer and use it to take images with a DSLR or something. The dew shield does extend out, which is great. I usually keep it extended out anyway um, and there's plenty of room to fit my dew strap around here. And I actually have a top mounted guide scope. So, what made me choose the deluxe version? There's a lot of features um, about this 72 EDF deluxe that make it great for imaging, especially wide field imaging. It's got a focal length of 432 millimeters which makes it um, an f6 scope just actually check that yeah it's got dual ED lenses in the front so it's a, it's called a doublet now I actually know for sure because it's actually stated on the telescope itself that this is FPL 53 glass which is basically the glass that you want. Other telescope manufacturers um, can be a little bit secretive about what glass they're using, but Altair have decided to put it out there and say, yep, yeah, this is definitely FPL 53. What's more, all this deluxe telescope comes with an optical test report, so you know instantly by looking at the number that it gives how good the lens is in your scope. Just so happens that this is an incredible lens in this telescope. Um, I, I must have won the, lo the scope lottery the day that I got it. Um, so, all being well, I shall probably keep this telescope forever. It's I'm holding it in one hand. It's quite light. The telescope itself, it weighs about two kilos. That's without tube rings. So, with the tube rings that it's provided with, um, it probably weighs about two and a half kilograms. Onto the focuser itself. I personally think this focuser is a thing of beauty. We just loosen it off. It's a dual speed focuser, uh, 10 to 1. So the course knobs are black and the fine focus is red. And it's got a graduated scale. So, on my previous telescope, which was an ED80 by Skywatcher, also a fantastic scope, I used to use a felt tip pen to mark exactly where my, my focus was. Um, as you, it was a permanent marker, but eventually it did wear off, whereas this graduated scale is never going to wear off. So I know roughly exactly where to set my focus each time, and I'll be in the ballpark, um, and then I can do my fine focus adjustments on, on a star basically. The deluxe teles the deluxe version of this scope also has what I now feel is like a must have on a telescope and it's this red band here. This is a camera rotator. 
before I loosen that off there, I can now rotate it, the whole thing without moving the focus position so that I can frame my targets exactly how I want. I, I've been spoiled by this feature and, and now whenever I see a refractor that I might like, I'm like, oh, has it got a telescope, um, a camera rotator? So camera rotator is a must for me. Yeah. <laughs> the dog is just there. <laughs> Did you just actually slap me? Yeah. <laughs> Not only that, but you can actually rotate the focuser all the way over to help with any balancing issues. I've, I've never actually run it this way, but there's no reason why you couldn't. And it also comes with a finder shoe. Personally, I use a guide scope on top of this anyway, so I don't use a finder scope. But what you could stick here, if you had a guide scope already, is a red dot finder. Now I think that would be a really compact solution for this telescope, especially for travelling. Let's see if you can see. I don't think you think you can. Inside, ah, you might be able to see there. Inside the telescope, there are actually baffles. You can see my lens is quite uh, dusty, need to clean. And that is to help contrast as well. So as such, this instrument is great for imaging. And at the end of the video, I'll show you some of the images that I've produced with it. But it's also good for visual as well. Um, I've used it with an Alta Astro Lightwave Dielectric Diagonal and along with one of their ultra flat 18mm eyepieces as well. The view through the scope was fantastic, um, flat to the edges and also I couldn't see any chromatic aberration and basically the contrast, it's like looking at diamonds on a sea of black so it was just a really nice relaxing viewing experience so i would be happy to use this for visual as well now some people are like oh but it's only 72 mil it's my opinion and i've seen articles in astronomy now that a, ref a small refractor will always punch above its weight when compared to a larger newtonian so if you've got new uh, nothing against newtonians i prefer refractors it, it is what it is and for a beginner my personal view is that I would always recommend a refractor over a Newtonian any day Newtonians are cheaper but the beginner has to struggle with collimation and cool down times and sometimes people get frustrated whereas these telescopes you just plonk them on the mount and off you go basically So what I'll do now, I'll get this fitted in its tube rings and we'll discuss further. So this is how I run with my setup. This bar here, this little one, is the dovetail bar that originally came with the telescope. The tube rings are CNC also. They've got two little screws that you just undo here and vice versa. Now what is important that it does come with, on the deluxe version, you see these little red blocks? They're called standoffs and they allow you to have enough space at the back with the focuser, if you don't have it upside down, to be able to balance. Now, I've seen a lot of people with scopes similar to this that don't have these standoffs that really struggle to balance. So it was a nice move from Altair, including them in the first place. And 
I love that they match the colour scheme as well. It, the whole project just feels like Alto really thought a lot about it and um, basically thought, Do you know what, let's make this absolutely brilliant scope with... And it, they just thought of everything with it. So, if you were to buy this scope, I wouldn't recommend having a guide scope on the, on the little quick finder shoe because you would have a nightmare to balance. It's the same as any refractor like this. I would actually recommend mounting your guide scope on top, piggybacking it basically. If I grab the scales, because this is what a typical setup would look like. Just quickly weigh it. So that whole setup there, obviously there would be a camera on the back here, comes to three and a half kilos. So with cameras, etc., you're probably looking about four kilos. Still, I use a HEQ5 and it handles this with absolute ease. I can't see me ever needing a bigger mount unless I get an absolute monster scope. And it's still light enough to put in a case and just lug somewhere. I Now, unfortunately, these don't come with a case like the Skywatcher ones do. Alte do sell cases and bags of different kinds, but I went to Argus, I had a look at their cabin bags, and I literally cut some foam out, put it in a cabin bag, and it fits it perfectly. So, without further ado, I like this telescope. I think it's it retails at £599, which compared to the Skywatcher is, is a bit more. But I think how premium it feels, it's well worth the money. I'm going to leave you with some of the images that I've actually taken with this telescope. As always, thanks for watching. Any questions, leave them in the comments and don't forget to take a look at my new website which is www.astrostace.com Thanks and bye for now.